Hi, this is AJ Wikes with Authority Media. I'm here with Chuck Sabin from the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Hi, Chuck. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to, good to be here with you. So, can you tell us a bit, bit about what you do at the Bluetooth SIG? So, I'm uh, uh, again, my name is Chuck Sabin. I'm Senior Director for Market Development for the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Uh, what that really means is that I spend the majority of my time looking at future opportunities for Bluetooth technology. Uh, okay. What are the new markets and use cases that the technology is going to go into? And what do we need to do as an organization to help our members uh, be successful in those markets? That's great. Okay, so we're sound guys. We deal a lot with Bluetooth products. Mm -hmm. We're specifically interested in audio. So I have a few questions about audio and okay. uh, where, where we're going with Bluetooth. Certainly. Okay, so first up, uh, what, what do you think we're going to see uh, in terms of features emerging as we make the transition from Bluetooth Classic to Bluetooth uh, LE? So it, it's, it's interesting you ask that question because uh, we've always had this conversation about um, you know, when you put uh, Bluetooth low energy into a device that uh, you know, any device can ultimately be a connected device mm -hmm. uh, because you have this opportunity for, uh, for connected applications uh, connected to, the, uh, to the, any device that might have Bluetooth LE in it. Uh, the fact of the matter is that 95% of all Bluetooth enabled devices are actually shipping Bluetooth low energy in it today. Okay. So specifically with audio, now we're, we're transitioning as well the, the applications for Bluetooth into a new architecture for LE audio. And that's one of the new uh, applications that's coming into Bluetooth LE for mm -hmm. a number of different device types. Right. Can, can you tell us a bit about AuraCast? Because that's a feature of Bluetooth LE. Yeah, AuraCast is is uh, is new for Bluetooth. Uh, it's it's part of the LE Audio architecture. Uh, it's a set of new capabilities that ultimately are going to allow uh, and enable um, people to be able to hear better and help the world hear better uh, through enabling audio experiences, new audio experiences like those in uh, public spaces. So AuraCast is a broadcast capability. It's not a paired relationship. It's a right. one-to-many relationship. So your device or any device that has an audio experience associated with it can broadcast its audio and it can be picked up by any number of devices that are uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Yeah. So what, what would be some typical use cases for that? So typical use cases for that, uh, there's there's three areas that we sort of uh, um, uh, classify the, the those AuraCast experiences. One is uh, share your audio. So this is me sharing my audio with you or all of the people around me. That's sort of the share your audio experience. So it's, that's more of a personal sharing experience of you being able to experience the audio I'm seeing or sharing a, an, a, a movie that we might be watching and we all want to be able to listen to that. Now you can share that audio experience to the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. uh, the other area is what we call unmute the world, right? Okay. So when you go into places like here at CES or you go into a restaurant or a bar or a waiting room, even for the doctor, there's usually a television screen. That television screen is usually sound down. Mm -hmm. So you, you see a visual experience, but you don't actually get an audio experience. Right. So what AuraCast does is it provides you the ability to put an AuraCast transmitter onto those types of devices and then broadcast that audio so that rather than the entire room hearing audio, you can choose whether or not you want to, you want to get that audio. So you scan for the broadcast mm -hmm. and then you tell your hearing device, whether or not it's a hearing aid or earbuds or a headset, that you want to listen to that audio experience and the, the earbud or, or hearing aid tunes into that audio experience. So mm -hmm. think about being in a gym where you might have multiple TV screens and you just tune into whichever one you want. Or if you're at a, uh, at a sports bar and you want to listen to a specific game, those are experiences that where you're basically unmuting the world where the sound has been turned down. Right. Right. The third area is around hearing your best. Right. There are all kinds of applications and areas where where uh, uh, sound noise keeps you from being able to hear what what you want to hear. It could be PA announcements. It could be the gate announcement at the airport. Uh, there's multiple gates that are that are announcing at the time and you're trying to get yours uh, and trying to understand yours. Or so if you have a, a challenge with hearing the, the announcements that you're trying to have, you can actually tune for that broadcast and specifically get that broadcast that you care about in your here. So in your in your headset. So any areas where you might have a challenge hearing it could be conference rooms, it could be uh, PA, it could be train stations. You know, these are areas where in public spaces you can actually broadcast audio, tune to it and get the direct audio experience into your uh, either your hearing aid, 
your earbuds or any headset or headphones that you might be wearing at that mm. time. That's the cool feature. Um, in terms of Bluetooth features, what, what do you think uh, the, the Bluetooth LE features are gonna aid with the convergence of consumer earbuds and uh, and basically uh, like the OTC, the OTC hearing assist, market hearing assistance devices. Yeah. yeah. So Bluetooth actually plays a significant role within uh, within that market for hearing assistance today. Mm -hmm. Right. Most people still want to get access, even if you have hearing aids. Right. Most people want to get access to the common things that they do, whether or not it's access to my phone call or or audio that's on my personal device, like my my uh, my phone. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a convergence of different types of hearing devices that you have. You've got your earbuds and, and like your AirPods and, and some some buds and so on on one side of the spectrum. And then you have medical hearing aids on the other side of the on the other side of the spectrum across that people are still trying to get best, better and better audio experiences. Mm. And Bluetooth is actually being enabled in all of those categories of devices, everything from medical hearing aids to OTC hearing aids to, to, uh, to, to AirPods and, and obviously AirPods and, and other consumer based devices. So as I mentioned before with AuraCast, AuraCast is a, is, provides hearing assistance for everyone, mm. right? It can provide hearing assistance for people who have hearing loss at the medical grade uh, hearing aids or OTC side of it, but also can provide hearing assistance for you and me who may not wear uh, hearing aids or, or, uh, or um, OTC uh, um, hearing devices, uh, but we need to hear better. We need to hear the announcements. We need, we have difficulty hearing at a train station. So that kind of hearing assistance will be available for all devices, whether or not it's a consumer device all the way down to a medical uh, hearing aid. And, and we're very excited about that because it just opens up a whole new pos set of possibilities for people to be able to essentially hear their best, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. That's great. Can you tell us about which applications would benefit from the lower latency offered by the LC3 codec? Yeah, so the LC3 codec is the new codec for uh, LE Audio. Mm -hmm. It's the new standard codec for LE Audio. Right. So ultimately it provides uh, better, uh, better um, higher quality audio at lower power with lower latency. Mm -hmm. And it is the new standard for all devices. So all devices will, will ultimately benefit from that. So it's essentially taking over from SBC. It's taking over for SBC and it also provides, you know, there's there's always been some uh, uh, custom codecs that have been put into into devices that's still capable and still possible with mm -hmm. uh, with uh, LE audio as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the LC3 provides a LC3 codec provides a much better quality, lower power, low latency for all applications, including casual gaming type applications as well. Right. Can you give some uh, examples of the uh, innovative user features, the user experiences that can be enabled by uh, LE audio devices? Well, we mentioned the biggest one, right? The big one is uh, is AuraCast, the broadcast audio capability, right? right. Uh, but the other things that come with LE audio as an as an architecture is uh, um, multi-channel isochronous channels is is a is a, a key component of the the LE audio architecture. What mm. that really means is you now have the ability and flexibility to manage multiple channels of audio for whether or not it's surround sound, multi-speaker could also be for better management of voice control. So now you've got multiple channels coming to the to the devices so you can manage one for listening mm -hmm. and another one for uh, for voice control as an example. Right. So that multi-channel capability, it's still to be seen how that's gonna be utilized, but the, the fact that it's there and the fact that you have that ability to, to slice up your audio is gonna provide all kinds of application areas, whether or not it's multiple languages or, or additional augmented audio experiences that you wanna have while you're listening. There's a, there's a whole host of opportunities associated with that multi-channel capability. Right, yeah. so it'd be true to say that you're, you're basically building the infrastructure for manufacturers to come up with the, uh, not whatever novel solutions they can, they can Build, build on top of that. Right, yes. So right. Bluetooth and uh, and audio has been a part of the, the foundation for Bluetooth for the last 20 years. Mm. So if you think about LE Audio, LE Audio is really setting, it's setting an architecture, a flexible architecture for developers to be innovative for the next 20 years. Mm. It really is the new architecture setting up for success for audio for Bluetooth for the next 20 years. Right, okay. Well, lo looking uh to the future, what, what is the status of the uh, development and rollout of the LC3 Plus codec? So, let's be clear, LC3 Plus, so mm -hmm. LC3 is the is the standard codec replacing SBC that will be in all Bluetooth enabled devices. Right. 
LC3 Plus is actually a licensed codec from Fraunhofer. Okay. And so that's not managed by the Bluetooth special interest group. That's actually managed by the outside by an outside company, Fraunhofer, who okay. owns the LC3 Plus codec. Mm-hmm. And there are other and and but it's generally being used for uh, for other customer applications. So you can license it from from Fraunhofer. You can use it for essentially certain custom audio applications that you might put into your device. Mm-hmm. But LC three will the LC three codec from the Bluetooth SIG will be the standardized codec that's available for all devices uh, um, that you that you that you purchase. So that there's interoperability amongst all devices. Right. And it's it's quite flexible as a codec. I mean, the, the the specification doesn't preclude you from using the flexibility of that of that uh, of that codec. But there's certain mandatory elements that we need to make sure are available so that we have cross interoperability of all uh, Bluetooth audio devices. Sure. Okay. And uh, last question is about uh, lossless. Is there is there any possibility we're going to see a lossless? Codec for Bluetooth. There's there's been a lot of discussion w- about that within the within the membership. Uh, um, I can't really communicate what the you know what those conversations are. There is conversation around that when you're really talking about various types of audio, uh, and there's debates as to do you or do you not need losses capabilities. Of course, yeah. um, the architecture itself provides for uh, custom codecs to come in. So you, there is nothing that stops a, uh, a manufacturer from building in a custom lossless codec if they wish to mm. for whatever application they might be, they might uh, wish to put together. Maybe it's, uh, you know, super high quality or it's gaming applications, you know, high professional gaming applications. Nothing from the from the specification precludes a manufacturer from adding those types of capabilities into the into their systems. Okay, yeah, so we, we, we're gonna have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, wait and see from a standardization perspective from the Bluetooth SIG, you'll have to wait and see. Mm. But from a manufacturer perspective, they have the flexibility to build it in if they wish to. Right, great, okay. Well, that was my last question, so thanks Excellent. so much, Chuck. Well, thank you very much for having me, appreciate it. This is AJ Wikes for Authority Media at CES with uh, Chuck Sabin. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.